anyone here? What's up, Jeff? Let me get in on this one. That might really be with goodbye, so... What is it? It's time to go back. Welcome. Hey there, welcome back to Generation S. It's a podcast about growing up in the 90s and the early 2000s. I'm Dan Kemp, joined by First Ballot Generation S Hall of Fame guest and one of my best friends of all time, Mr. Lou Carnivali. So you didn't do the, if you remember or you know, blah, 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 this is a podcast for you. I have an idea. Want to hear mine? Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. If you know what the Red Ring of Death is, this podcast might be for you. Beautiful. I love there it. There we go. Love it. Okay, there you go. So, yeah, God, screw that Red Ring of Death, man. <laughs> God. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of like, yeah, like that's, we're going to talk about it because it's a big part. So if you didn't see the title guys, we are talking all about probably our favorite console of all time. I mean, it's probably my favorite console of all time, or at least one. I mean, I I was thinking that on the way, I was going to say the way into recording, that means going from, you know, the living room to the (laughs) office and my 30 second walk can commute. That's right. It's probably one or two. It's Super Nintendo and it's a 360. I would say, yeah. I mean, as far as hours put into one system, this has got to be it for me because this is the system that took oh, me yeah. from. Uh, I mean, it's it, we're counting it by the way, guys, because this came out in the early 2000s. So for all of you who are like, oh, this is not retro. This is retro. This game system came out almost 20 years ago at this point. So it's uh, thanks. I feel old. Yeah, we're old. It's fine. It's stuff. Anyone, but you can play original Xbox games on it, so therefore exactly. it is retro. So then you're really yeah. old, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you before we started recording because we talked about this, like what makes because if we we've talked about wanting to do maybe even some more video game discussions in the future because they're a lot of fun for us, and so we're like, well, what what makes a retro game? And so one of the ways you put it was well, two things that I liked. One was two generations back is considered retro as far as that goes. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, but the other thing you said was if you go into a GameStop and you can no longer buy that generation of games there, it's old enough to be considered retro. Yeah. Other than like there's like five 360 games and, uh, you know, three of them are Madden and two of them are. Are there still like games I, nobody wants? I haven't been to a GameStop in a long time. I don't even know. If, I've never, never seen. They, they'll still have a couple here and there. It'll yeah. even have some Wii games, but it's like two or three. It's not like it's okay. a whole. Se- let's put it this way if they don't have a section solely dedicated to it anymore right okay i got gotcha. you so yep. yeah we decided let's do xbox 360 now in the past we've done kind of earlier generations of consoles first but i, I don't know like you or i didn't really have i mean you had i guess you had an xbox i didn't have an xbox like an original xbox. i did have an original xbox but towards the end of the cycle okay so it wasn't ps2 like, was just so monstrous that's the thing i had a ps2 and it was great um, but yep. next generation when the 360 and the PS3 came out, I mean, hands down, I played the 360 way more and I had a PS3, but again, it was later generation for me yep. because the me 360 too. was, it was perfect. It was, it had everything we wanted. And so yep. I, uh, I think you got a 360 before I did. Cause we actually, I mean, we were friends by the time we got this console, but you had it for a little bit before me. Cause you worked at a, tar- you got it at target, right? Cause you worked at the target. Yeah. So I worked at uh, a target and. If you remember when the 360 came out, there was the premium edition in the white box. Yep. And it had the hard drive. And then they had the core edition, which was the green box, and it did come with a hard drive. So you had to buy a memory card. That's that's another thing. It's a retro gaming system if you need a memory card for it. See, there it is. Okay, yeah, we'll count it then. Absolutely. So I um I did get a core system because this is one of the I mean, the PS2 blew everything away. It was a super hard system to get. Yep. This was not as hard as the PS2, but definitely more difficult to get than a PS3, at least in, in my 
experience. Which, by the way, you can thank the PS2 for, right? I feel like the hype for the PS3 is solely built on PS2 success. Yes. So. So when I was working at Target, we had a guy that bought the core system right around the holidays. Yeah. He got the premium system and he returned the core system. And I was the person that had to go up and, you know, make sure it was okay to bring back. And I go, oh, um, guys, I'm just going to swing back behind the counter and I da, 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 punched myself out and I go, I'll take it. <laughs> and nice. I put, I bought the, the, re, the returned core system and I had the memory card and, you know, just in the, you know, three or four minutes we were recording this, this episode so far, I, this game's already flooding back that I'm like, you know what? The nostalgia is strong for the Super Nintendo, but it's definitely the 360 I put more hours in. There's no way. And yeah. we're going to get to some games that we both like that may be on the... And you said you wanted to go over some of the top-selling games of all time. Yeah, before we started recording, I mentioned, like, hey, I got the list here. Let's go through... We'll go through, through some of these, uh, you know, near the end of the episode. But I think what it was, was the 360 was really the first system that you and I bought as, like, legal adults, where, like, nobody was going to tell us to stop playing it. And so yep. back in, like, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Nintendo 64... <laughs> Like my parents pretty much dictated, okay, get off the TV, go outside, right? The Xbox yep. 360, we were in college, you know, so it's li- literally we could stay up till four in the morning playing Gears of War if we wanted to, because no oh, one was. Gonna I was stop just gonna us. say when you said up to four in the morning, like, dude, I remember when Gears Two had like a frozen like winter map pack, and they go, oh, it drops at like three a.m. Eastern time. I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna say it right now fucking staying up <laughs> till 3 a.m. to get this damn map pack. Yeah. So got, uh, it was the first system I did midnight releases for, for games. Right? Because again, I was me an too. Adult. I did. I did do. Yep. I did one. Yep. It was a, out of all the games I did a midnight release for. I could tell you what game. I can't tell you the year, which is a sports. It was a sports game. Okay. It was an NHL game. And it was right after Hurricane Sandy hit long, hit the metro New York area. Yep. So we had to like go out late at night because they were doing like the odd even um, plates. Yeah, yeah. Like license plates to get gas. So that was the night we could go, you know, me and Dan Vorbeck, who's been on our show before. I was living with him. And it was our time to go get the plate, uh, our plates uh, to go get gas. And I remember just driving back like late at night. It's like eleven forty-five. I go, "Ooh, NHL comes out in like fifteen minutes." I'm like, "Well, why the hell not?" And I just turned around. <laughs> and I went to GameStop. I'm like, "I, I could do a midnight release." Yeah. And I walked in. It was like five people in there. And I'm like, "Okay, I'll take that." Okay, great. Thank you. I'm like, "Oh, yeah, I'm tired. I'm going to bed now." I've now what I have to now what I have to install it and go to bed. Right. Well, yeah, that's the thing. You can get yeah. it digitally. I so I there's one game that I did a midnight release for one time and it was WWE SmackDown mm. versus Raw 2009. I, I did want to see who was on the cover. That was, that was Triple that H. One? It was Triple H and Shawn Michaels, the tag team where they were doing the tag oh. team stuff. Okay. So yep. that was the one I got at a midnight release and played it, you know, and so, it was good. But So that was our senior year of high, of high school, of college. college then. Yeah. So we were, yeah. I mean, you know, we're still kids. I'll count it. But, um, yeah. but anyway, so let's back up a little bit here. So we talked about your first you first got the system working at the target what do you, what was the do you remember the first game you played for it hmm like did did it come with a game I, when you bought it or you just got the no, system no it didn't come with a game it's funny i think the first game i played for it was not a 360 game it was, it was actually battlefront 2 which, which had is, come out on the original xbox yeah that was uh which was weird it was weird playing it on the 360 it was no, 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 wait, no, I take it back. I'm sorry. I, okay, so I got the 360. I bought it for myself. Yeah. I got Battlefront 2 as a gift. I don't think you could play Xbox One game, original Xbox games on the 360. So I had the 360, but Battlefront 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, any yeah. system. Yep. But I played that more than I did the 360. I think the first 360 game I got was Perfect Dark Zero. 
Okay, yeah, because that was like it wasn't a launch title. I mean, I guess it kind of was. Um, it was launch. Yeah, I believe it was. Yeah, because I, and I I probably owned it at one point too. Because again, when I first got my 360, I was like, well, I got to buy games for it. So what? I have no money. So what am I going to go buy? And so it was mm-hmm. the greatest hits. You know, so at least twenty bucks or less. And if it was used, it was definitely much less usually. So yeah, I definitely owned Perfect Dark at one point. This was I will say also this was the first system where I bought games and didn't necessarily play a lot of them all the time like back in the you know what i mean like back in the day with the earlier generations like if you had games for your system you didn't have a lot usually so you played what you had and you played the shit out of what you had because that's all you had Mm -hmm. uh the 360 was the first time i really had disposable income and was like you know what i'll buy this sure it's 10 15 bucks and if i only play it for 10 minutes fine so i definitely had plenty of those games for the 360 because there's so many 360 games and we'll like i said we're going to go into list of some of the better selling ones but like god there were so many ones that on this list that i've never heard of so like it's there's, really it, yeah I, I mean one or two i mean i've heard of most of definitely hadn't played all of them but like mm-hmm. it's insane so like i so i first got one after you um i i think it was like yeah i'd saved my money and i went and bought it at uh god it was probably target or walmart I think, and I bought it new. I didn't buy a used mm. one, and because I wasn't going to make that mistake again, I had bought a used PS2, and it shit out yep. of me, shit the bed. So I was not about to let that happen again. And so I bought a new one, and I probably bought the core, yeah, I bought the core one as well because I didn't have the hard drive. I had to get the memory card, which was what was two hundred fifty six mm. megabytes or whatever it was. Like it was just a something stupid amount. It was terrible. Um, and yeah, I remember the first Xbox three sixty game I bought and played was uh, actually. I can't remember. there's two games it could have been one was the first gears of war which i think i had actually introduced you to gears of war after playing the first one with you yeah yeah so you're welcome um <laughs> but no i think it was actually because i played the demo of it at the GameStop in the mall was king kong mm-hmm. did you ever play that game i remember you absolutely loving that game and that was i know for a fact that you played that game more than once because you played that in college multiple times i beat it twice yeah because you could play as yeah. kong or as the human yeah so i loved that game i it blew mm. my mind because it was like it was the first time i'd ever seen like xbox 360 graphics which is funny because at yeah. launch they weren't really that much better than regular xbox no they, yeah it was like a in between xbox original and 360 yeah yeah but it looked great as far as i was concerned and so like this is so cool like the, with the control it just it was awesome. So I played that game qu- and it's one of my favorite movies. It came out around the time I saw it two or three times in theaters. Did you ever see King Kong? Yeah. Yeah. Love that movie. Peter Jackson's King Kong. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. So anyway, um, it was either that, like I said, or Gears. Actually, and then you know what else I bought? I did buy it. SmackDown versus Raw 2007 because I'm pretty sure we bought that around the same time. Yep. So that would have been yep. that, that. Actually, that might that game might have been the reason I decided to commit to a 360 because you had it on your system. Yeah. And the custom music. And you could do custom music. Well, could you in 07 or was it 08 was the first time you could do custom music? I, and whatever the first game was that came out on the 360. That, well, that was 07. I don't, so you, I don't remember you what could you, do custom yeah. music then for that? Because I, I couldn't remember. I thought I it was 08. Had, yeah. I don't know. Either way, we were, of course, I mean, we we became friends through the wrestling games and, and wrestling in yep. general. As you've If you've listened to the show, you, you probably know that from any of the wrestling episodes we've mm-hmm. done. Uh, so we've been playing in the SmackDown games together since SmackDown 2006. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I haven't probably bought one in the last few years, but for the most part, yeah. I mean, we were playing them pretty consistently for, I mean, over yep. a decade, we'll say, you know, pretty consistently. So, um, but yeah, so that was the first one that I had bought. And then again, Gears of War, uh, probably about Perfect Dark on a whim. But uh, so for you, because I remember when we first were playing them together, one of the first, an- another game that you had bought, I think it was for 360. It wasn't like a burnout game that you had for Xbox 360. Oh, and no, it was um, on the original Xbox. Oh, it, it was, was Burnout Takedown. It was a great game. Okay. Good game. Yep. Okay. That's right. That's what I'm thinking of then. I, th- I will say that the the sports games on 360 were very good. I got NHL 2K7, yeah. and it, w- it was a very, very good game. Um, the wrestling games were good, but, you know, you had Gears, brand new franchise, and then Halo 3 came out when we were in college, and I remember not a huge, it wasn't a huge lecture hall with, like, hundreds, but it wasn't a regular classroom either. Right. It was, like, in between, and we went... And I remember walking in and the professor goes, I guess you guys don't play Halo. We're like, we do, but we don't like we don't. He's like, yeah, because there's nobody here today. And there wasn't. 
Yeah, that's like right. Like seventy five percent of the class was gone. Yeah, because Halo Three came out. So yeah, I mean, you just just those two franchises franchises alone on three sixty is just a ridiculous amount of copies sold with yeah. Halo and Gears. Yeah, because you you're not a Halo guy, right? I'm not a Halo guy either. I don't. I like it. I, I'm not. I was never a. Um, I I played I played the story mode. I I got the Master Chief Collection on Xbox One. Yeah. So I mean, I played the you know Halo One, Two, Three, and I played four. I've played them. I've played multiplayer with with you know some of my friends have gotten my ass kicked more than I can count. I enjoy it. I I, I enjoy it. I'm not a fan of Gears. Is Gears of War is the reason I enjoyed the 360, and it actually, in a weird way, it kind of sounds weird. It changed my life because I say that not because oh my god, this is a great game because I made some good friends. They were friends of friends who became my friends. Yeah, who were groomsmen in my wedding, and this was through so, Gears of War, through Gears of War. Yeah, and they became you know? my friends so, because they became your friends. So you know, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, it's, and we're going to see them in October. We're so see, we're, we're all getting together for a we're wedding. Getting together for and a wedding. And the reason, I, yeah, I mean, we would have became acquaintances, probably acquaintances with them. Yeah. But since I played Gears of War, and I remember saying to, to Dan, not you, Dan, the other Dan Warbeck, that we yep. found on the show again. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, can I have Barry's username? Because I would like to play Gears of War with him. Sure, here you go. Yeah, okay, what about Tom? Hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And we became friends because of that. And I know there's other people that have done it with complete strangers. Yeah. Have become friends with them. Mm-hmm. Or have uh, relationships. Yeah. Um, you I know, think, uh, significant others. That's crazy. That's awesome. I, th- I think we need... I mean, this is a perfect kind of segue to one thing I really wanted to talk about, where this was the first gaming system where online gaming was just as good if not better than playing on a pc because pc online gaming was a thing yeah. for a while but mm. if you were on a console you had literally nothing you had ps2 but that sucked we tr- i think we've tried it out even like we, we when we had our ps2 i think we tried out the online and it was just trash it's terrible mm-hmm. um same thing with the, the original i never i never played xbox live on the original xbox i know it was leaps and bounds better than what playstation had but it was still very in its infancy right where there was not much yes. to it xbox 360 made it so easy to not only play mm-hmm. online with a bunch of strangers but to set up an, a party and play private matches of games with your friends like gears of yeah. war 2 to the point where again I'm not an online gamer. I suck at most online games, but I spent several nights, hours playing Gears of War 2 with you guys doing horde mode because that was what we did. And that was the thing is it was that was a game where yeah. you didn't have to play against each other either. It was a game where you, you could play work together. with each other. Yes. Yes. And that was one of the yeah. first games the- to do that on a platform that was one of the first online platforms that just worked. You didn't have to do anything. You paid an annual subscription of like $50 and all of a sudden mm-hmm. you're playing online with your friends. And that was so revolutionary at the time. It was, and you know, going off what you said of why, it, why we we chose gears because if you're playing Halo, you, you know, if you're not good, you're the guy that's going to be at the bottom. You're going right. to be the one getting sniped. Gears was, I believe, one of the first. It, I'm sure there was probably another game that did something close to it with horde mode or co- co-op non storyline, but I, I don't think to the scope and size that gears 2 did it which was it it made me play want to play online gaming right because i was i i seen it and i'm like wow you guys are working together yeah yeah we're working together I'm like that's that's amazing because you had gears one i didn't play it the ironic thing is my two favorite franchises i can't believe we're gonna i can't believe i'm gonna say this on an episode of generation s gears of war i started with gears 2 and i go oh that's great I need to go back and play Gears 1. I played Arkham City. Ah, I get to say that name. Yes. I played Arkham City on the 360, and I go, oh, this is great, but why is Joker sick? And Dan goes, you have to play Arkham Asylum. Okay, out I go, and I buy Arkham Asylum for like 20 bucks or $15 because it was used. And I'm like... Ooh, this is really good. But just those two games on the 360 were, oh, oh yeah, man, such good stuff. There's so many good things. Yeah. And just talking about those remind me of other great games. So, I can go on a tangent if you want I, me to about I mean, great it, games I liked. <laughs> Maybe in a minute here, but like, it's so true because I feel like with Nintendo or Super Nintendo, 
Um, we haven't done a Sega episode, but if we did one, it would be the same. Like we'd run out sooner than later of games that we have nostalgia for. And it's part of it is because we didn't own as many games back in the day. But the other mm-hmm. part is there just there were not as many great games back in the day to play and just talk about the Xbox 360. I mean, literally, you could spend an entire adult life playing through the entire library of decent games and not run out because this was also not the first because you had PS2 and Xbox, but this was the first one of the first generations to have games that you could spend 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 hours in and still yeah. like uh, I'll give you an example. One of my favorite games of all time. I don't think you ever got into it, but it was Skyrim. A little bit. A l- I played it a little bit. I, Nowhere near you and some of my other friends, but I, I, yeah, I have played it. I probably put 60 plus hours into that game and yep. did maybe a third of the content that was available to me. Not to mention that there's quests that will just keep going for you forever. Like mm-hmm. there's so much you could do in that game. And I think Xbox 360 was the first era of gaming where you now, I think for better and for worse, quite frankly, are measuring a game's purchasing power based on how many hours of entertainment you get out based on the dollar amount which i i don't always agree with at this point but i mean what are your thoughts it's funny we just talked about this yeah you know about the suicide squad kill the justice league and the avengers game that came out yeah right like i want to say 2020 like during covid or when covid calmed down Mm mm-hmm and we had discussed like, well, what's what makes a good game? Well, in this day and age, it's how many hours am I going to get out of it? Right. You know, how can in this in this era right now, how could you charge the same amount of money for something like Suicide Squad, which apparently I haven't played it, I played the beta, which was it was okay. Yeah. But a lot of people are saying, okay, you're done in you know eight to twelve hours. Like legitimately, you're you're done unless you want to replay everything. And then you get a game like Red Dead Redemption or Grand Theft Auto, which is like, you could probably put legitimately like 100 hours, 125, yeah. 150 hours. How is that game the same price as this other game, which is like you're, you're done in 10 hours? Sure. But Just, I'll flip it to you this way, because I with those two games comparing, yes, 100%. But I'll give you like a random Assassin's Creed game where you'll spend 60 hours running across the plains collecting feathers versus Mm -hmm. a tight, let's say 20 hour campaign like a Batman Arkham Asylum. I would pay I would pay more money for Batman Arkham Asylum than I would for a random shitty Assassin's Creed game because it was a great experience and I would want to replay it because it was that fun. Whereas, you know what? I could probably count how many games I've replayed. Yeah. And I, they are definitely the most on the Xbox 360. Hundred percent, because like it was story, like story mode, yeah. right? Yeah, the campaign. Because that was, again, this was another thing. The first generation of like campaign or multiplayer, because almost every game had it. Again, sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. Um, mm. Yeah, this was the true. This was the start of like what's still considered gaming today. You know what I mean? Like in its, mm-hmm. you could. I, I'll put it to you this way: anything before Xbox 360 there's a good chance I may struggle with getting through it from either a gameplay perspective or a graphics perspective. Like it's just, it's not, there's, there's, don't get me wrong. Older games, some of them absolutely do hold up, but you're more likely to, like I'm less likely to be like turned off by playing a random Xbox 360 game because it's still going to look pretty good if you think about it. I mean, mm-hmm. they, 360 yep. games look really good still for depending on what game you're playing. Um, Gameplay yeah. wise, same thing. Story mode wise, same thing. You know, you're going to play through games that are going to take you 20, 30, 40 hours that are pretty good. So it, it is. It's there's, I mean, I've still. I don't have any other previous generations. I have in my like tote over here in my, I'm in my office and I've got my game systems and my, I have my, I have color coded totes in, in case you were curious. So I have a red one. <laughs> Guess what games are in my red one? Uh, Nintendo. Nintendo switch. Very good. Uh, yeah. blue, blue one. What do I got in there? PlayStation. PS4 games, right? Because of course not yeah. backwards compatible. So I don't have any PS3 games anymore. Green one. Xbox. Xbox and Xbox 360 games because it's backwards compatible and there's still a lot mm. of really fun Xbox 360 games. So here's the thing. My Xbox One currently, the disk drive is kind of meh. Okay. It doesn't really work that well. And also I don't have a lot of HDMIs 
in the well i do have i, I all my hdmi inputs are taken on my yeah. tv so i'm at the point now where i'm like i might just take my 360 yeah and bring that out because the xbox one i'm like there's a couple of games but not yeah like, i i'd rather have my my 360 games out yeah it's just just this there's more i enjoy well, that's the thing too, yeah. Because like I, I was just gonna say, well, why not just play the 360 games digitally? But it's like, well, if you own them, that's silly. Just bring out your 360. Because yeah. again, that was the other thing too. This was the weird transition generation where you had like, I mean, I started off using the component cable, so I didn't have an HDMI on my TV. Yeah. Because like we had both of us like tube TVs. Oh wait, you just saved me. You legitimately just saved my issue. I forgot. I have so my TV that I bought in July doesn't have av cable so i had to buy an adapter av to hdmi oh i completely forgot the 360 has avs yeah. Oh, yeah so i could have both yeah there you go problem solved well, all right <laughs> problem solved thank you you're welcome uh so it just like i said this was like a true transition to where like it was the console that took you from the quote-unquote analog era of gaming to digital gaming you know in every sense of the word because i'm trying to think like on the original xbox could you buy digital games i don't think you could you can get DLC. I got. I remember the first thing I got of DLC was on Battlefront Two. Okay, and it blew my mind. I'm like, I'm gonna hit a button and it's gonna install levels on my system. Right. That's weird. Blew your mind. It did. It was. It blew my mind. <laughs> and then on the 360, you still had DLC, which was still a, a relatively novel thing. But they came out with. Remember, like Xbox Live Arcade came out, and like you could just start yes. downloading games to your system, indie games, right? Indie games were not really a thing before this generation because there was no other way to get games other than buying the disc or the, the cartridge at the store. Now, like yeah. Xbox 360 became a platform for indie developers to be able to release indie games, not just on PC, but also on consoles. And all you had to do was go in and download it real quick. And, and yeah. that, that was all Crazy. you had to do. Um, do you remember this? Remember when the Xbox 360 didn't have Wi-Fi? Like you had to hardwire your internet to play online? Yes. Yes. And then you had to buy an adapter, which I actually ended up getting. Yeah, same here. And it sort of works sometimes. But I do remember we were living with my grandmother and I remember like I wanted to get I remember this. I think it was 2000 Smackdown 2009. I wanted the DLC yep. characters. I wanted Vader and I wanted Doink the Clown. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm downloading these guys. So I literally had to like get a, I had to bring my Xbox upstairs, hook it up to a different TV, and just so that the the Ethernet cable reached from the router to the Xbox, so that I could download it. That's great. Yeah, that's I, and, I yeah I remember that. And then I bought I, the adapter had, for my apartment. That I remember. I remember when I was at home with my parents, I was able to just run because my room was next to the office, so I could run the wire. Yeah. And then when I moved in downstate, I literally had to run a wire. Like I had to buy like the longest internet cord. Yep. And I ran it all the way around the living room and had to hide the wire. Yep. Yeah, I did it. You did. And then you get I'm just a wire. looking at some of these I'm looking at some of these games that came out as there's you're so many, as you're talking. And so there's just There's so many. There's so many. And there's so many memories. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I feel like is it weird? Like, I feel like if I think of the 360, I smile and it feels like a warm blanket is around me. Yeah. No, I don't. Is think that I, weird? No, because again, this was like, it's the gaming system we would have wanted as kids, but now we finally had time to play it as much as we wanted to like it's it literally it because there was there were banger after banger came out for that system because a, a system lives and dies on its heart on its software right that's what it comes down to if your console doesn't put out good games you're not going to do very well and think about it too because this generation you had the xbox 360 and the ps3 xbox 360 kicked the shit out of ps3 in sales like it wasn't even close for a couple of reasons yep. one it was cheaper i think it was like a hundred dollars cheaper at least to buy it a 360 two mm -hmm. it had better console exclusive games than the ps3 did because what did mm -hmm. now ps4 is different right we're not talking ps4 but ps3 what exclusives did they have over xbox that were worth playing there's not I many i had a ps3 and i didn't no, exactly. You had, I, I can think of a couple. You had Resistance. Remember those games? The shooter Alien mm -hmm. Resistance? Yeah, Resistance Fall of yeah. Man. You had, um, what else did you have? You had Twisted Metal, which 
apparently sucked. Only had one game. Yeah. It was yeah, that, that that one that wasn't good. It was good. bad. Because um, the sports games were cross-platform. Uh, no. I, weren't they? No. Except for... No, MLB, MLB. MLB. That's true. So they had mm-hmm. MLB, which, again, I guess if that's your thing, then great. I was not a huge sports game guy. Still, I'm not, too, for the most part. Uh, but that's... I mean, that's it. Like, you had all the wrestling games were cross-platform. Like... And then on the Xbox side, you had Gears of War, you had Halo, you had right done. You could stop right I mean, there. That's yeah. Those are that's that's it. That's all you needed. Yeah, those that's are, all you needed. Mm-hmm. Those are the killer apps. Just, mm-hmm. Not to I'm mention, sorry, I, didn't, I, I, no. I didn't mean I didn't mean to be <laughs> like literally stop, but like yeah. But in reality, that's I those it, two it games. Is. Yeah, it was the perfect time between. Those games, Gears was brand new. Yep. Halo, even though it was the third installment, it was so much bigger than it was in Halo than Halo 2. Yep. And the accessibility to play online, the technology had gotten better. Yep. Because you realize during the original Xbox, not everybody had, at least in the United States, not, not everybody had high-speed internet. Oh, yeah. No. By the time the 360 was out, most everybody had a high speed internet, which sounds weird to say. Yeah. But it's true. Yeah. And it's so and, and that's the thing is and not even talking about the online features. The PS3 online features sucked, man. They had nothing. Like mm-hmm. it was now you didn't pay anything for it, but God, their infrastructure was terrible. Um, do you remember? And again, I know we're this is a 360 episode, but do you remember in like the early 2010s when the PlayStation Network was hacked and everything shut down? Kind of do. It I, kind of rings the bell. I don't think you had a PS3 at that point. I actually was getting into it at that point because there was some good games that were coming out. But I remember it was like there was an outage. Like my information was supposedly compromised. They shut down the network for weeks. And when it finally mm. came back, they were like, hey, sorry about that. Here's a free game. And I remember I it was the first time I ever played the game Infamous, which is an amazing game on the PS3. Good game. But, yeah. Good game. So I just was thinking about that because like, yeah, their online always sucked. Now it's fine. Like PS4 online is, is good. PS5 I'm sure is fine too. Yeah. But um, that being said, I feel like we we can't. I mean, we've been painting a pretty nice picture of the Xbox 360. But as we said at the beginning of this episode, if you remember the Red Ring of Death, this podcast no. is for you. Let's talk about it. So the Red Ring of Death was basically the yep. system. And by the way, I. Not affiliated at all with Microsoft, but I do want to recommend on the YouTube channel. I don't know if you've seen this, Lou. This is like a four-part history of the Xbox documentary series on Microsoft's mm. YouTube channel. Have you watched this? No, I have not. It is a very good documentary, and it does not shy away from like acknowledging its own past mistakes. Uh, they do mm. pretty much a whole episode on the Red Ring of Death for the Xbox 360 good times yes so essentially what it was was there was a component within the system that would overheat what, what, what basically happened is when you would turn it on and turn it off it would heat up and cool down and it was it would become very brittle and i forget what the, it was something with the reader i forget what it was specifically but mm-hmm. basically it would just it would die eventually it would malfunction it would it would break and you would get this these three red rings around the console because this is another thing I thought was cool. By the way, is the console would light up your controllers because these were you could do wired or again another thing they did great was wireless controllers. Like they had yes. first party wireless controllers that just worked. But anyway, you could tell who was playing on which player one two three four because it had those four rings around the Xbox logo on the controller and yep. on the console itself. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I had to mention that because that was actually a really cool feature. But it also meant it was. that when you had the red ring of death, three of those four ring, uh, three of those four lights were lit up red, and that was uh. basically like the blue screen of death on a computer. Once that happened, y- you couldn't do anything; it wouldn't turn on. That was it. Yeah. Now, did you ever have it? Yes, twice. Me too. Twice. You did, and I remember the first time it happened. And this was really back in the day when I wasn't very good at doing research on the internet because Google was still. I mean, it had been around for a little bit, but like you couldn't like go on like now. We didn't have smartphones yet. You, you didn't have, have smartphones. smartphones. I had to log into my laptop and be like, "What's wrong with my Xbox?" <laughs> and like <laughs> Google was not nearly as good of a search engine as it is now. But I eventually learned that it was called the Red Ring of Death, and people were just like, "I can't turn on my Xbox. What do I do? How do I fix this?" I was, I, I was trying to find videos on how to fix it, and it basically was like, "No, you're kind of screwed." So. I remember like I I mailed it back to Xbox. Like I sent an email going, hey, my Xbox doing this. They're like, yep, send it in. We'll repair it. And they did. 
and it came back and it was it I mean it worked it was fine but then it did it again and it was probably only a few months later and I was like what the hell man like I don't have money to buy a new system right now this fucking sucks it's I mean I was pissed and so I remember mm-hmm. I bought a used one off of a guy on Craigslist <laughs> because that's what we did back in the day. I was really nervous, man, because I was driving into like the city to like a rando guy's apartment. I'm like, what the fuck? I, what am I doing here, man? And so like, do I do I need this system this badly? Like I pulled up to the guy's apartment in Albany, New York, and I was like, do I need this this badly? I'm like, well, I'm already here. I got the cash. Let's do it. So anyway, I bought his 360 off of him and, you know, it, it worked. It was fine. And then that, no, so I guess three times at Red Wing, because that went Red Wing too when I was down living in Atlanta. So I've had three. Red, oh, God, I was so pissed. Uh, and then I got an Xbox One and the problem went away. So the end. What go. about you? When did yours Red Ring? So my original one lasted many years. Yeah. Because they said it was not the first generation. I mean, it happened to the first generation or first wave but of 360s. Yeah. But yeah. So the one, the first one that I had let, did last a long time. Um, The second one? No, wait a minute. Yeah. It, okay. Uh, So I had mine modded yep. by your brother. That's right. That's what Red Ring did. So when it modded, it, it Red Ring, I'm like, oops. That was can't a you send thing. That shit yeah. Back, yeah, can't send that shit into Microsoft. <laughs> so I just went to GameStop and go, hey, Red Rings, what will you give it to me? They'll go, like, oh, we'll give you 25 bucks. I'm like, fine, take it. There right. you go. It's yours. Yeah. I got that, brought it home, turned it on, Red Rings. Oh. I'm like, shit. Brought it back, got another one, worked for a little bit. Red Rings, girl was dating at the time, had bought, or her brother had gotten the uh the smaller one the the black one yep yep so i don't know what exactly it was called i think Xbox it was a slim, 360 X- pro slim or something like that or was that the something like that yeah yeah there's the Maybe. elite one too that was black and it had the hard drive yeah had it built in and like the button to open it was like a non like it wasn't a physical button it was like a touch touch yep. button that's right so her brother had gotten that for christmas and she asked me do you want I go, well, great. What's GameStop? Oh, they're going to give me $150. Great. Here's $150. Yeah. Um, and that's still the one. It's in storage now. It's in a. It's like in my closet, but that's still the one that I have. It's it's worked ever since. Now, when I turn it on, because now I discovered I could use AV cables, it will probably red ring. Uh, so I guess technically one, two, I guess three times. Three times. Yep. So. Yep. And here's the thing. Overall. The Xbox 360 is still a fantastic system that I have incredibly fond memories for, but you can't you can't brush that aside. That was a big deal no. when that happened. That was unacceptable. It was. it was bullshit. And they did remedy the problem eventually, but mm-hmm. it took a long time because a lot of systems were affected. The thing is, to keep in mind, as you said, 360 demolished PS3 in sales. Yep. Even with all this BS going on and people knowing about it that didn't have systems it still outperformed the ps3 yes people were willing to essentially go this sucks i'm gonna get it taken care of but i'm not jumping ship right no they were still very much in the xbox ecosystem which is why the next generation was disappointed i mean now granted i have an xbox one i got it before i got a ps4 but again it was because of the, the you know the 360 Ah, uh, just the Xbox One is okay. It's you know what I mean. It was fine. Yeah, but it didn't have. There the, was yeah. something about the 360 yeah. that just set it apart from everything else. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't the HD DVD. You no, know, I forgot about that. Actually, do you, do you guys remember <laughs> that? Okay, so I know you and I have talked about this, but listeners, do you remember back when Blu-ray was not the only HD disc that you could get? There was a big war between Sony and Microsoft on the movie front for HD DVDs and Blu-rays, which you know who won that, obviously. But back in the day, do you day, know why they won it though? I do know why they won it. And bow chicka bow wow. <laughs> <laughs> which is the reason why VHS went out over Betamax 20 years prior. Um, yeah, because history repeats itself. Porno. Anyway, so yes, the Xbox 360 was an HD DVD player. Now, I wonder how many HD DVDs were actually made. 
I don't know. I remember seeing them at TJ Maxx for yeah. like a dollar. And they look the same. I mean, like, honestly, yeah, if they had, like, the, their quality was great or whatever. So, like, yeah, you could have a little collection. That's probably like a collector's thing now. It's like HD, like an Xbox 360 and HD DVDs. You know what I mean? Let me look it up on eBay. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, we'll just, see where they go I'll, for. I'll be curious while you're doing that. But yeah, so of course, again, we know that Blu-ray won out. And of course, now Blu-ray's, you know, going the way of the Dodo, it seems to, with physical media kind of just taking a backseat, which is, that's another thing. Like, just physical media in general is going away. And I feel like Xbox 360. Not my house. Well. Not my house. That's fair. Yeah. I don't have room for a lot of it now. So it's unfortunately just sitting in a garage. But it's good to have it. You're right. Because, you know as they start pulling licenses for all these digital, you know, movies and whatnot where they don't have the rights to keep them in your account anymore. You lose them even though you paid for them and it's a whole thing. So yeah, physical media should not go anywhere, but you go into a store now, you don't see a lot of DVDs and VHSs anymore. It's which is a shame. But anyway. I don't think see any VHSs. Well I'm sorry. Yeah, I meant DVDs and Blu-rays. <laughs> sorry. Jeez. I'm yeah. teasing. No VHSs. So an H D D V D add on for the three sixty looks to be anywhere from twenty to thirty five dollars. 20, 20 to forty dollars. That's not bad. But I'm wondering like the movies. No. Like I wonder how many movies they made. Yeah. But anyway. Well, there's a lot that's open right now, and it says HD play HD DVD player in thirty movies for hundred and fifty dollars with twelve watchers. Wow. Let's see some of these movies. Ready? Let's see. Anything good here? Chronicles of Riddick, the Italian job, training day. The Shining, uh, Apollo 13, Meet the Fockers, Tomb Raider, Shrek the Third, Anchorman, Nutty Professor, and not one but two copies of The Matrix Reloaded. Whoa. And Nacho Libre. <laughs> so so <no>. for a hundred and twenty <laughs> so for a hundred and fifty dollars plus twenty two dollars shipping plus tax. So for about two hundred dollars, you can get that. And there there's twelve people looking at it. That's crazy. Yep. All right. So what we're going to do now is we are going to look at some of the top selling games on the Xbox 360. Uh, let's do 20. I think we have time to do 20. And I want to, I'm curious, because we've probably talked about a lot of these, you know, but some of them we haven't. So I'd love to kind of see, you know, where, we, where we're at with all that. So let me just pull up this list here on the old Wikipedia. And uh, all right. So here we go. At number 20, we actually have a three-way tie. So each selling oh, 3 million okay. copies. So the top 20 games, number 20, 3 million copies. The first one here is connect sports mm. <laughs> yeah i never played anything on the connect yeah me neither uh, that kind of surprises me but but wait i i mentioned arkham earlier yeah. that i thought i would never mention that in an episode i'm gonna mention a show that i love that actually uses the connect as a piece of their really? equipment ghost adventures really uses a, a something a connect like device to investigate the paranormal. Well, yep. and that's funny because I know it's got some pretty cool tech in there. There's like an infrared camera and stuff because it's got to sense your body. Because because yes. a whole for those of you who don't remember, the Kinect was basically a tool or like an add-on for the Xbox 360 that was to compete with the Nintendo Wii, where you could use your body as the controller. So use like an infrared sensor, and it was honestly the tech was pretty cool. The games just sucked. There was no good games for it, right? Um, Connect Sports mm. is probably the closest thing to a good game for it, um, if you could call it that. It certainly was not Wii Sports. I'll say that. Oh, definitely was not Wii no. Sports. I actually still play Wii Sports. I love Wii Sports. It's amazing. It's great. We should do a Wii episode in the future. Is that nostalgic? I guess if it's the same, uh, definitely is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Two generations. That's right. Two. It's two generations back. So, all right. Uh, tying, uh, rounding out the number twenty spot here, we have Halo Three ODST which is the spinoff mm -hmm. game from Halo 3. Did you ever play that? I did play that. It was okay. But again, I'm not a true diehard Halo fan, but right. I enjoyed it. Same here. Yeah. So I, I've never played it. But anyway. And then at uh, the, the the last one in the number 20 spot here, and I think this is the only time where we have a high. So this is, it's fine. This is just awkward. Um, actually, it's not. But anyway, um, with 3 million copies, Gears of War 3. Wow. You thought it'd be higher on the list? Really? I thought it would be higher on the list. Yep. Nope. It's at, uh, you're going to be real pissed at number 19 if you think Gears of War 3 should have been higher. <laughs> well, well, I will say that a Gears 3 out of the original three is my number two. 
Okay. I, 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 I did enjoy it. The multiplayer, the horror mode did get a lot better, but still not my if i had to go back and play one it would not be number three it'd be number two so number two yeah. um yeah but I, I like number two it's on my, it's on my list to meet my list so okay all right well let's i uh, think uh, i think my list of games that i had owned and played on 360 is way better than what we had on the ps2 episodes it was like yeah i got like three games on yeah, this list that's true yeah this is i think more yeah there's plenty i'm looking at the list now yeah you're gonna please you'd be happy yep. with this list all right number 19 Keep in mind, this outsold Gears of War 3 with 3. Point, yeah. uh, excuse me, 3.2 million copies, Sneak mm. King. That really doesn't count, though. It was the, the Burger King game. But it was like five bucks, and it came with a Whopper meal. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. I mean, it counts. It counts. It was a stealth adventure <sighs> game, and it sold. You would have to. Okay. It sold. Oh, all right, hold on. How, <laughs> so it sold how many? Three point two. Three point two million. Yeah. Okay. Which game made more money? Not DLC. Just if that was if Gears of War three was fifty dollars or sixty dollars, and Sneak King is five dollars. <laughs> well, I guess that's true. Gears of War would have made, but how much more did it cost to make? As far as profitability. That's true. And marketing, too. I see. So I don't know, man. Maybe it evened out. Um, But fortunately, it's the last one on the list where you would be able to call bullshit. But uh, okay, it is a shame. That is interesting. You know, games that, you know, just missed the cut because of games like Sneak King include Assassin's Creed, the original, um, Mm. the complete Lego Star Wars saga and Marvel Ultimate Alliance. So they did not oh, sell as many. Ultimate Alliance. Yeah, good game. Yeah, it was a great game. All right, number 18 with 3.35 million copies sold. It is Call of Duty World at War. Mm, yeah, a Call of Duty is became huge in we, this era. I was going to say, we didn't really talk about that franchise because I'm not huge into it. Like, did you get into the Call of Duty games or not really? A little bit. We'll see if the one I played is on the list. All right, well, here we go. Coming in at number 17, we have with 3.48 million copies Batman Arkham Asylum. Okay, Arkham Asylum got how many? Uh, 3.48 million. Okay. Um, fantastic game. Really, yep. really good game. Actually, just play. I like the Arkham series so much that I will play one every season, and I have them dedicated to each season. So this so is a Halloween Arkham one, Origin- I uh, No. So Arkham Knight, I play Halloween because it takes oh, place true. on Halloween. That's fair. Yep. And then winter, I play Arkham Origins, and then Arkham City, I play in the spring, and then Arkham Asylum, because I had to go walk to GameStop. Long story. Had an interview with MSG. Didn't have a car. Walked to the GameStop to pick it up for Dan Vorbeck, and it was like 95 effing degrees that day. So I always associate hot summer days with Arkham Asylum. I don't know why I went on a tangent. Sorry. Next. <laughs> okay. Uh, coming in at number... We do have another, t- another tie here, actually, So, but it's a good okay. tie. Okay. Both selling uh, an equivalent of 5 million copies apiece. We have Gears of War 2. Okay. And we have Gears of War. That's not good for business. I mean... Your, your, your sequel didn't increase? No, and in fact, Gears of War 3 sold less than both of those. So yeah, do the math. Ah, oh, come on! <laughs> yeah, five million a piece. Still not bad, right? Um, no, I would I would say that's great. So, I, I, so far, I, my list has been pretty good. Yeah. But I think well, that's the last on my list. Well, well, no. There's a couple more here. Hold on. One. Hold a couple on. more. Okay. Okay. Coming okay. in at number 12 with a big jump here, almost double. 9.41 million copies sold, although citations a, are needed, yeah. according to Wikipedia. Uh, we have Halo 4. Hmm. Okay. What Did they, they give you a reason why there's citations needed? I don't know. Probably just didn't have a good article. I, I don't okay. dig too deep into or Wikipedia. Or maybe it was a pack. Maybe it was a pack in game. Maybe, yeah, because did they do pack in games this generation? I don't remember. Towards the end of the cycle, I think. Okay, yeah. And this is also when you can get, hey, here's your free game. By the way, it's a digital game. Oh, mm-hmm. that's, that's true. This, dig- that, that's when this started. Yep, digital copies. That's a good point. Um, yep. All right, coming in at number 11 with 9.87 million copies, we have Halo Reach. Hmm. So another I know that one. I don't think. Don't think that was a popular one. Eh. I mean, obviously, number three is going to be 
on this list at, at a good number. But yeah, I yeah. played that. It was okay. Yeah. So, um, all right, number ten with ten point one six million copies sold. Call of Duty Ghosts. Not the one I played. Nope. Same here. So moving on. Uh, number nine, not a Call of Duty game with eleven point one million copies sold. We have Grand Theft Auto Four. I I played it. Yeah. And I didn't really enjoy it. And I'll tell you, here's the reason why. Okay. When it came out, Grand Theft Auto 3, I was in high school. Had all the time in the world. This came out, I think it came out after we were in college. So we're adults now. Yeah. I started to not have the time. And when I did have the time, I didn't want to... Grand Theft Auto, you have to spend time playing. Number the so that was number f- GTA four right correct yep GTA five when I got it on the PS four you can suspend your game essentially pause the game turn it off turn it back on you're right where you wanted to be yep changed it changed the way I played GTA and I was able to play it so this was in for me at least an awkward in between time for GTA right but certainly not surprised where it is on the list yeah yep absolutely uh I bought it pretty much when it came out let me see it came out april 2008 that's probably around when i bought it maybe a little later like in the early summer and Mm -hmm. it was still being very much talked about because i remember i was working at the radio station at the time and i bought the game and i was talking about it on the air because my colleague who would just i was relieving him of his shift was like yeah i'm gonna go home and play it now too because it was just so (laughs) it was it was a huge deal um and I, i i liked it but again i never beat it um i probably would never want to go back and play it because i just don't care enough about it like it's yeah i grand theft auto is a game series that i want to like so bad because of it's just it seems fun but anytime i play it i'm like Ugh, it's fine you know what i mean like I, i'm not yeah. like clamoring for more necessarily maybe it's because it's a driving game and i don't like driving games maybe it's because it's a shooting game and i'm not good at it and i don't know but it's just nothing's ever clicked with it and i wish it would because i want to play five i've just it's been around forever like i'd love to play it at this point so anyway, uh, I got right. the time during COVID. That's when yeah. I played it. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. When like, like lockdown COVID, like don't leave your house. I'm like, well, all right. It's pretty time. good time to play GTA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. Coming in at number eight with 13.49 million copies. It is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. That's the one I played. Okay. There you go. Liked it. Disliked it. I, th- it was... How do I say this without a, a YouTube algorithm? It was like the it, well, okay. I'll just make it very generic. It was the hip thing to do. Okay, like everybody played. It wasn't like that's kind of how I was at Grand Theft Auto Four, so I can understand. Yeah, it was. Everybody had Xbox Live, and it's like, all right, this everybody's playing it. Like, I guess I gotta get it. Yeah. It was a peer pressure. I was going to say I was going I was going to say something completely different, but I changed it because you know damn algorithms. <laughs> uh, okay, coming in at number seven. Once again, we do have a tie. This is our last tie, by the way. Okay, uh, both selling a thirteen point seven million copies. We have Call of Duty Black Ops Two. Mm-hmm. I did yeah. play that quick, and that was the one I fizzled out. I'm like, I'm tired of getting spawn snipe, spawn smite, spawn snipe. Yeah, that's basically. And, and that. again, because this was the era of online gaming, that's what you did. Yes. Uh, and then the other one was the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, which we've already oh, talked about. Yeah. Oh god, Skyrim. I love that game so much. Yeah. Wasn't the it, it wasn't, was good? I yeah. It's just not. You're not a huge I, fantasy guy. That's not your thing, right? I mean, well, I mean, yeah. It says a guy that you know post power ranger stuff but still yeah, no but i'm talking like uh, medieval fantasy lord of the rings like that kind of setting a little bit i've yeah. i've played it nowhere near as almost all of my friends have spent hours and hours into it i spent a little bit yeah but i can definitely i'm a guy that even if i don't like something like i'm not a huge harry potter fan yeah but i can see why people love it right can absolutely see why people love it yeah. it's just not my thing same thing with skyrim i can see why people like it like oh it's pretty cool it's just not my jam right but <laughs> it's not my jam um <laughs> sorry i use that phrase that's okay the, 
<laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not surprised it's on here. It's it's it, it, for what it is. It's an amazing game. Just yep. the, the amount of detail and it's, it's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, number six at 14.5 million copies. Halo Three. Yeah, not surprised at all. Nope, absolutely not, my, not. not surprised at all. And that one came out in 2007, so it's one of the oldest games on the list. And yep. it, yeah, it did really well. 14.5 million. Uh, number five at 14.55 million. So just slightly edging out Halo Three. We have Call of Duty Black Ops. Hmm. Yeah. Just, Call of Duty. A lot of Call of Duties here. Well, and spoiler alert, number four at 14.72 million, it's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Ah, jeez. Yep. So, now, the good news is that is the last Call of Duty game we're going to be talking about here. Now, I'm interested because Halo's, Halo's off the list, Gears is off the list, yeah. Call of Duty's off the list. We got three left. Well, we're at number three. Number three. This one's... GTA's, GTA's off the list. Well... We still got the? GTA Five. Is that on 360? Yeah, that's first came out on 360. Shit. Wow. Okay. Well, continue. I guess like it's. I guess it's on the list. So it <laughs> is. I'll say it's on the list, but it's not number three. Number okay. three with 21 million copies sold, coming out in May of 2012. Minecraft. Ah, uh, my son loves Minecraft. Just for the record, like, which yeah, is crazy. My nephew likes it. I I get it, but. It's like not for sneaking. me either. I see why. It's, <laughs> it's still better than sneaking. <laughs> I see, Minecraft it again. Is it? I would have more fun with sneaking. <laughs> Here's the thing about Minecraft. Like you said for Call of Duty, like or uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, uh, Skyrim. I get why people like Minecraft, but every time I try to play it, I can't get into it. But do I love watching my son download a mod to his iPad and play Minecraft and blow shit up with dynamite? Of course I do. It's amazing. So that is, I like Minecraft. He just got, in fact, it's sitting on our living room couch right now. We just bought him a new bed sheet set of Minecraft because he loves it so much. Mm. His bedroom now is decorated like Minecraft. So, well, I will say though, for a young child, it's probably better that they're playing. Oh, obviously, it's better than they're they're playing Minecraft than any of these Call of Duty or GTA games, or even Fortnite. That's so like, we don't let him play Fortnite, yeah. but his friends do. I'm like, nah, I'm good. We can stick with Minecraft. That's fine. So Minecraft, you got to think in. Yeah, oh, 100 and he does. Yeah. That's, he, we and buy him literal hardcover bound encyclopedias and books on how to program and build in Minecraft. And he reads them. That's like true. it's amazing. That's I awesome. love it. Yeah. So Minecraft's okay by me. All right, I take it back. I take back my meh. Wow, that's big. You don't take back shit yeah. usually. Man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's me taking it back. <laughs> All right, number 2, 22.95 million copies Grand Theft Auto. I, think, I guess it is great. Oh, so it's not even number one. It's not even number one. And I, 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 I know I told you before that you weren't going to get pissed anymore. But I think number one may get you pissed for the best selling. Okay, what is? What do we got? The best selling. Hold on, let me build this up here. The best selling okay. Xbox 360 game of all time with 24 million copies sold, being released in November of 2010. Forza, Con- Connect Adventures. Oh, shut up. <laughs> That's not real. <laughs> it's I'm looking at it. It's real. Come on, Connect Adventures. Yep. No. Yes. No. That and I'm and I'm saying that not because it's actually Connect Adventures. To me, if you're a pack in game, you can't be considered a sold game. I also that for Super Nintendo when Super Nintendo came out, it was Super Mario World. To me, you can't compare that. Like, oh well, this many people bought it. Because it came with the system. And then X amount of people bought... No. How many people bought the game as a standalone? Not as not being included. Well, I mean, this would have come with Same the Same thing Connect. with Wii Sports. This would have come with the Connect, but not necessarily an Xbox. So everybody that bought a Connect got this, though. But this is why they bought the Connect, so they could play this. Think about that, okay? How about that? Mm. People bought a Nintendo system to play Mario. So yeah, it was a top selling game, but it's because people wanted to play it because they so they had to buy a Nintendo. To, think about that. How many times? Maybe not many, but how many times have you considered buying a system just for one or two games that you know you wanted to play? Xbox One, ah, uh, Gears of War four and five. There you go. So there you go. So if they I, bundled it in, I get it. You would have. Wouldn't that count as you bought the game and you just happen to have to buy a system with it? That's true. But how many people buy a system because they've 
they get a game, but they really don't like the game. I don't know. Maybe. I just, I feel like, I don't know. I'd have to do more research on Connect Adventures to see if it's worth playing. Yeah. Or not even if you don't like the game, you, you buy it. Okay. How many times, ready? Yeah. When we were in college, did you go to GameStop and they had the Tetris and Clone Wars game combo for sale for $2? Because it came with the original Xbox and nobody freaking wanted it. That's fair. But I guarantee, technically, if you go on the list of original Xbox games, it's probably on the top 10, top 20 list because it came with the system. But how many people didn't want it? How many people did not want to own the game? Quite a few. But flip side, how many people bought a Wii to play Wii Sports? True. So True. Me. It could go either way. No. Mine came with Super... Mine came with uh, New Super Mario Brothers because I got oh, it towards the end of the cycle. That's right. Okay. That makes sense. And there's I'm going to say the number, one ge- the number one game in my eyes on the 360 is GTA V. Okay. That's fair. I mean, it's a legit game and it wasn't a pack-in yeah. and you had to buy... And it came later in the cycle, too. It came out in 2013. And the ironic thing is, we said this in PS2 are, you know, among the greatest systems of all time. The number one game on PS2 was GTA San Andreas. Yeah. Crazy. So, as far as, far as GTA 5, by the way, just because I decided to pull this up, do you, it, it is considered, by the way, the seventh and eighth uh, best, or no, it's like one of the, it's the second best selling video game of all time. 190 million copies have been sold of GTA 5. That's insane. But it's because it's come out on PS3, Xbox 360, PS4, Xbox One, Windows computers, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X. That It's kind of like Skyrim. Because Skyrim's now you're been coming out on everything. You're in the generation now. Well, you don't have to release a new game. You could just release DLC. Mm-hmm. I see Although, the ads on my phone. There's some sort of like Chinatown Wars or something like that that just came mm-hmm. out for it. If I'm wrong, I apologize. But yeah, it's something on GTA Online. I liked it. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed it, and I know they're coming out with a new one, I think, in next year, 2025. Yeah, the trailer actually looks pretty fun for it. It takes place in Florida. Yep. I think it's Vice City, actually. It's yeah. going to be back in Vice yeah, City. Yeah, Vice City-esque. Yes, so that's pretty exciting. Oh, good stuff, man. I was worried because we didn't really do a lot of planning beforehand for this episode. We kind of were like, oh, let's just do this and we'll do this. And But I feel like we got a really good discussion out of the Xbox 360, which I guess shouldn't be a surprise if you know us. Like, if you're listening to this, you know either of us. Like, this is obviously a system that brought us to even closer together as friends and was one of the greatest video game systems we ever owned. So I guess maybe not a yep. surprise that we had a lot to talk about. I'll, uh, can I give my notable men- honorable mentions that didn't make sure. the list? Absolutely. Uh, so, in my opinion, Mass Effect didn't make the list, which I'm very surprised about. Yeah, no. Bioshock didn't mm. make the list either. That's yep. another one that shocked me. No pun intended there. Uh, this one wasn't going to make the list, but I highly recommend it, especially what's coming out next month. The Ghostbusters video game is fantastic. Really like yeah. that. And it has, and it's aged pretty good. This one kind of surprised me it wasn't on the list. Street Fighter 4, any incarnation of it. Because it was a big deal when it came out. It was the first yeah. like 2.5D Street Fighter for a modern system. And like we said, online gameplay, online versus mode. It was like being an arcade and somebody would interrupt your game and here comes a new challenger. That was really cool. And yeah. um, on a personal note, the amount of wrestling games were, were top tier on this, including a TNA video game, TNA Wrestling. So, oh yeah. If you're well, a wrestling fan, it was it was a good system for wrestling games. Well, and I'm sorry to say, but unfortunately in the top fifty, not a single wrestling game on here. Mm. That's disappointing. Mm. Yeah. And in fact, only two of the three mass effects are in the top fifty, coming in at number thirty seven and thirty six. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. So and then what was mm. the first one you said? Bioshock? Let me just look. Bioshock, Bioshock is on the yeah. list. It is number forty one. Only sold one point right. five this... million copies. Wow. It's, I seem it's regarded much more than that. What about Street Fighter 4? Any Street Fighter make the top, like, 100? Well, I'm only looking at a list of... They only have a list of 52 on here, so I, I couldn't tell you. Wow. But it's not in the 52 okay. that I'm looking at. Now, keep in mind also something like Bioshock was on multiple platforms, so that does cannibalize True. it a little bit. So it wasn't an exclusive. Yep. You, th- you think about this... Actually, it's funny. No, not really. But, like, a lot of these top 10 and 20 were... <laughs> other than Gears and Halo, I guess they weren't exclusives, but they're still very good sellers. Yeah. So I don't know. 
All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for us this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um, before we go, of course, some housekeeping items. First off, make sure you are checking us out on other areas of social media, including Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, where we've got a fantastic channel full of wonderful content uploaded weekly that is not going to be here on the regular podcast, including discussions uh, of various topics like Power Rangers, video games, wrestling, you name it. Uh, make sure you are, if you have it in you to, to support the channel, make sure you're checking us out on our online shop. Uh, the link is in the description. You can grab yourself a T-shirt or a notebook or a, a coffee mug. Uh, and at the very least, listen, if you like the show, if you like hearing podcasts about growing up in the 90s and the early 2000s, if this was your generation and you have friends that grew up in the same generation as you, send them the show link. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're on Amazon. We're everywhere. Send them the link. Check it out and leave a review. If you get a second, I know like every time someone says leave a review, like, somebody dies in a nursing home i don't know but seriously leave a review if you get a chance because it does help the podcast get more visible on the different lists and it would just I really appreciate it so it, I, it just it does good and quite frankly i just i love reading when people talk about the show so even if you leave a shitty review put it on there i'll read it on the show i don't care i was just gonna say that how about if you leave a review we'll give you a thank you on a future episode at 100 username i will shout you out on the show listen Leave a shitty review, but make it five stars. Just do that. Like, let's meet in the middle here, okay? I think we can do that. <laughs> if you get a nice review, give a nice review, Dan will thank you. you. Give a negative review, I'll chew your ass out. There, okay, fair enough. All right, you heard it here fair first. Enough. All right, perfect, guys. Guys, thank you so much for listening. And uh, listen, if you want us to talk more video games in the future, let us know through any of the channels that you subscribe to us on. Leave a comment, whatever. And uh, we'll definitely talk more video games. Believe me, it's an easy thing for us to talk about. So, all right, it's time to get out of here, guys. And as always, we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.